Hi. Oh, that was loud. I'm sorry. Hi. Welcome back to Adobe Life on this Thursday morning. Or for some of you, maybe even afternoon. Like me, since uh, one minute. My name is Tim, and uh, this is the third stream all about uh, Photoshop this week on the UK Adobe Live. Well, it's not the channel anymore. We are on Adobe Live. But, oh, well, doesn't matter. Right. Yesterday, uh, we already talked about um, the image processor. We talked about actions in Photoshop, also uh, batch processing, and I think, yes, also variables. So uh, today, it's going to be the second part of uh, automating Photoshop, and I have some cool things to show. And as always, this is a live stream. So if you're watching this on YouTube, come on over to behance.net slash Adobe Live or even shorter, be.net slash Adobe Live. That's where I will be looking at the chat. And that's also where a lot of Adobe Live family is already hanging out. Let's see who we have in the chat. All right. Sean says, howdy. Doris says, hello, Tim. Sean and everyone. Oliver says, hi. Stefan, hi again. Automated stream and don't ask me about the free. Doris says, hi again. Sandrine says, hola, amigos. Uh, hi, buenos. Uh, hi, Yumicorn. Welcome, everybody. All right. Cool. Yesterday, I promised you we will be taking a look at the fantastic project Aspen. And you may be wondering, hang on a minute, this is automating Photoshop. Why are we looking at something else? The reason is, I guess we can just jump right in. There we go. Project Aspen allows us to interface with Power Photoshop through the web. So if you are abroad, or maybe you just don't have a powerful machine on your hand, but you still like to do some processing in Photoshop, Project Aspen is here to help. We will take a look at some of these. You can also see uh, there's some InDesign in there. Um, so we probably won't take a look at that. Luckily, it's very similar to this one, Photoshop Data Match. All right, so let's get started. How can you access Project Aspen? Well, it's actually quite easy. You just type in aspen.adobe.com minus the um, Octothorpe. There you go. Then you should see this uh, page and make sure you are logged in with your Adobe account. And once you are logged in, then you should see these um, seven panels. And furthermore, any recent activity you may have <laughs> done in Aspen. All right. So the idea behind this project is you can do batch processing online. Uh, so Sean had to sign an NDA. Yep, that might be the case depending on um, if you are already a beta member or if you're not. Of course, as, um, yeah, as a beta member, there are certain other restrictions. So you might need to uh, check that. All right. Um, cool. Let's have... Are you allowed to type people that? Whoops. <laughs> All right. Let's have a look at Aspen. Um, and should we shall start with... Um, why don't we start with the auto crop? I think that's quite fun. Because remember yesterday uh, when we were in Photoshop and we were cropping images like this, to uh, fit them onto the badge, we had some, sometimes, some issues when the person wasn't quite centered in the image. In other words, uh, if we want to crop a photo with a person, doesn't have to be a person, can also be something else, um, we want to make sure that thing is still in the photo. So maybe we want to adjust that crop. However, if we have like a hundred or even more photos, that could be quite tricky to do that by hand. So, Project Aspen to the rescue. Ooh, look at that. We, get, we even get a short preview of what we can expect. Um, for this, I would just use the, um, the sample files 
So we can try that out. Um, why don't we use the products today? This will now ask me to copy those files into my uh, um, into my Creative Cloud files because demo files. And you can see some of those products, like this one or that one, they are not centered. So automatically cropping them could be quite tricky. So just going to copy them to my files. This will take just a quick second. Do, 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 do. And now we can get started. Right, so selecting the assets. Remember, it was saved under products, so I can go here, select them all by holding down shift. There you go. Select. Um, yes, you might need to change to Chrome if you are having issues. Uh, the Chrome browser usually works the best. Might not work in some. Again, this is not a finished product. We're just, this is a project. Um, all right. So the photos have been loaded. And now, after we're happy with the selection, checking every photo is in, yep, certainly. We can say how we would like to crop this image. To, be to better see that, we can just select it template, uh, test file, how about this one? And now let's say, oh yes, we want to um, crop this for Instagram, maybe, I don't know, <laughs> something square like this. Now, the artificial intelligence, it's working for me in Edge now. Okay, cool. Um, the artificial intelligence is going ahead and cropping this image based on the um, object we have. And of course, if you can see, it's not, we don't have quite enough space to properly center it, but uh, the auto crop does the best it can. It won't add new um, pixels to the left in this case. So that's absolutely fine. It's much better than just cropping it in the center and chopping half of the headphones off. That wouldn't be good. <laughs> um, it works now, go figure. Firefox. All right, cool. <laughs> Even better. <laughs> Maybe just a refresh. Sometimes that's okay. All right, are you happy? Yeah, very happy. Okay. And of course, we can see there are many more. There you go. Eh. Many more presets. <laughs> a whole host of different resolutions. Or you can, of course, pick your very own one if you want a two by two image. Sure. <laughs> there you go. Um, all right. Cool. The power, however, now of Project Aspen is we can do this for all images just like that. So we can say, oh, yes, we would like to have the JPEGs and the compression, uh, small compression, perhaps, and medium quality. Oh, you can pick your own values, of course. Or you can add some PNG, a PSD, or TIFF file, whatever you prefer. And we can see we have total assets. Uh, we have a number of 24 total assets. So those will be processed in the cloud. Or we can save the task for later if we want to. Uh, but I think, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's run the task. This is now exporting. And while this is exporting, we can do something else. Of course, with 24 files, it won't take too long. Um, and I should get a notification once this um, is done. And of course, we can already have a look at the files. This, again, is in the cloud in our assets folder. Um, and we can see, there you go. We always have a... Um, oh. Just got a notification, auto crop, success. Your files for auto crop are ready. There you go. All right, we can see we have a small preview and the main image as always. All right, so with that, let's have a look at some of them. Yeah, certainly the 
main subject is uh, part of the image. I would say that's quite good. And like I said, imagine um, you are doing this for not only 24 image, but perhaps for 2400, 24,000, although I haven't tested 24,000 images yet. That might take a while, <laughs> but for a lot of images. So um, this is really, really useful and uh, will allow you to just automate your way. All right, just go leave without saving. I'm not interested in the demo files. Um, all right. Now, we also have a couple of other, um, a couple of other yeah, features, uh, tools, let's call it that. Um, so are there any ones you would like to see most? Maybe we can do the replace smart object layers. That could be fun because we already did the photo data merge yesterday with Photoshop. So maybe we can do something that's that we haven't done yet. Any preference in the chat? Oh, hi, Gilana. Okay, I don't want to wait. <laughs> we'll do the replace smart object ones. Uh, right. So yesterday, we already, if you recall, oh, smart object, thanks, Sean. Uh, yesterday, uh, if you recall, we already um, did some replacement of images. Uh, remember, we had the badges with a photo. However, those images, if we were, if we try to do that with smart objects, where we have transformed some of them, that would not have worked. Photoshop doesn't recognize those images as replaceable layers. However, in Project Aspen, this does recognize replaceable layers. For example, we can do the... Do we want to do the beverage can design or the t-shirt design? Uh, let's do the beverage can design, because why not? Again, this is just the demo files. Of course, you can use your own files. You don't have to use the demo files. I'm just doing that because they are quite cool and you can see some uh, fun designs. They are much better than, design, than the designs I could ever make. All right, so let's get started. Just like before, we have to select the files we would like to use. In this case, I think they were saved under drink can or replace my objects, simple files, drink can. There they are. And select them. So we have to select the template file. This is our template file. You can see it's just a mockup of some uh, cans. And once we have selected our uh, mockup file, which should have the um, the uh, uh, smart objects in it, so uh, Aspen knows what to uh, replace. There you go. Uh, let's select smart objects. We would like to do all of them because why not? Getting a message? Okay, nothing important. Um, all right. Uh, will it only be a on be an online web app uh, website like it's today, or do they plan to integrate it in within, say, the CC app? Uh, um, that's <laughs> that's a good question that I don't have the answer to. Um, this might make its way into an app, or this could also feasibly. Uh, stay online. I don't have any infos on that yet. I mean, the idea is that you can do this in the browser. So maybe this could be integrated in like Photoshop and the web. But I, like I said, no information on that as of right now. But as soon as we have information, and of course, if you are part, if you are part of this program, if you are joining the Aspen beta, um, then you would probably receive uh, updates as notifications. Uh, okay. Oh, sorry. No, I don't, I don't want to add more files. I want to add those. There you go. What? So we have back back to Project Aspen. Uh, we have our um, smart objects where we want to replace something, and we have the replacement files. Uh, which should hopefully then uh, be replacing these um, template designs here. In this case, we just have some <laughs> very colorful logos. 
And if you want to add some more, we can always do that. Uh, all right. Cool. I think let's uh, have a look at the preview. Uh, I mean, the CC app would make sense as well as the mobile app, iPad. Or, oh, uh, uh, maybe. Yeah. If you have some cool ideas, I mean, there's community for, there are community forums. You can always let them know. Um, all right. Are you happy? Yes. Okay. So as you can see, those images have been transformed to wrap around the uh, cans. They are not just pasted straight on. You can preview some logos. Let's say, oh yes, we also want to check logo number four.png. Definitely. Just takes a second. Remember, this is all happening in the cloud. I'll send later and Chrome and submit those. Yes, all right, perfect. And there we have the um, other logo. So I think, yes, we've proved both of them. They are they're looking fine to me. So, total assets of 10, let's run the task. In this case, I will jump through, uh, jump through the um, assets straight away. So maybe if we're quick enough, we can even see that, yes, they start out empty. Oop. They start out empty and will be filled in over time. And again, I should receive, just gonna get my phone ready, I should receive a notification as soon as this is done. And of course, if we have a whole host, um, a whole host of <laughs> images, it will take longer. I was just reading the question from Sandrine, maybe for the last minutes before the end of the stream, are there any notable beta like these worth trying? Oh. Your files are ready to view. There you go. Thank you. Let's refresh. And there they are. Amazing. I'm just gonna zoom in right now. I don't think we need to see the full preview. I think we can all imagine what they look like. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's great. Mm-hmm. Yes. Oh, fantastic. That's a great one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is my favorite one. Definitely. Oh, that. Oh, this one is even better. Okay. All right, so let's, um, oh, are there any questions? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, are there any notable betas like these worth trying? Yes, yes. First of all, because I want to answer the question, you can always have a look in your uh, Creative Cloud app. Or oh, didn't like uh, that I'm on, uh, that I've changed networks. It's, it, was, it gets, gets confused. Uh, all right, so first of all, you can always check your Creative Cloud app for any beta uh, applications and as you can as you saw there was a beta tab around here there it is so you can always have a look for example maybe the new photoshop beta with the um, generative fill which we had a look at earlier this week and what i also recommend is a website called labs.adobe.com just takes a second to open. And in there you have a couple of other projects that are ready to go. Um, like, for example, some from the Sneaks. Of course, some of them are just uh, for you to learn more about, like the uh, pro Project magnetic, magnetic Type. Can't even speak. Um, for example, here, then you can watch the video. Of course, not all of them are ready. But, for example, the... Um, the, where was it? the Vanishing Act, there you go. That's uh, available to try out right now. So those are, would be the, um, uh, the places for you to check out any cool projects. Uh, Aspen doesn't show up in there. Yeah, um, of course, there are some, I mean, yeah, this, is, this is not all Adobe projects. We have a whole bunch of them. So yeah, I don't think there's a single place we have listed all of them. But I can check. All right. But those two things, so the beta tab and this, would be your first, um, <laughs> your first point of uh, searching for projects. Cool. Now, since we already have uh, 
talked about Aspen for 20 minutes. I think we can take a break from that and go back into actually doing some work in Photoshop. So let's quit that. I'm just going to go here for a second. And okay, that didn't work. <laughs> Let's try again. There we are. Fantastic. All right. Whew. <laughs> Working live. Can you post the links in the chat? Um, well, I, I, I guess so. All right. So labs.adobe.com. Da 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 there you are. Okay. Right. Back to familiar territories. Back to Photoshop. The release version. You don't have to download anything apart from Photoshop to join along. Mm, okay. So yesterday we talked about, or I talked about, mostly you were listening. I talked about actions in Photoshop. And I just wanted to um, amend a couple of things which you should definitely know about actions which we didn't have time for yesterday and those are that you can import and export actions so if you have made the best action in the world and you would like to share that with someone or maybe someone has made a really cool action and you would like to import that that's very easy you just go to the hamburger icon and in here you have the load and save actions or even replace if you want to update a set of actions. This will always load a set of actions. So you can't uh, really um, save individual actions. If I just select the mask, this action we made yesterday, you will see this is grayed out. I have to select a set of actions. Of course, the set of actions can always just contain one action. So it's not really a big deal. And then you can say save actions. This will save an ATN file or action file. Um, you can save that wherever you want. And if you have downloaded one of these action files from the web or anywhere else, then you can load those and import them into your Photoshop uh, app. Furthermore, if you would like to um, find some inspiration for possible actions that maybe you can tweak or that you can actually use, there are some pre-built ones which aren't uh, added by default. You have to add them manually, like, for example, the commands actions. And yes, there are some shortcut keys which are conflicting. Uh, we can remove them for the moment. Um, right. So those actions are quite useful, especially if you're using them in button mode. For example, if you have a selection and you would like to crop it, usually you would have to tap the C key, then enter and enter again. So that's like three steps. Instead, you could use the action for that. And there should be, there you go, a crop selection action and that's just boop, one click. And of course, if you like, you can customize this action to automatically deselect the area if you want. So you don't have to manually say Command D to deselect. All right. And there are some more actions like flip horizontal or you can rotate if you want. Is that available? Huh? Oh, I think this might be because it's locked. Yes. There you go. Um, or you can let it like the rotate here, you can say flip, um, you can add some other things, you can copy paste, um, and of course you can always uh, set a keyboard shortcut for copy and paste. For example, you can say, oh yes, F2 for cut and uh, F3 for paste. So it's just one button instead of Command-C, Command-V. Maybe for accessibility or for express keys on your tablet. Um, some other cool actions which I would like to point out. We won't go through all of them because I would like to leave them for you to discover. Um, but one of them was the, 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 the image effects. Yep, there we are. Because in there, there are some really cool techniques. Like, for example, the um, aged photo one. There it is. Which adds some really cool uh, faded color. It's not just um, overlaying a photo filter that's actually also softening um, 
and doing a couple of other things um, with the layer, or like, could have a look at the, um, I mean, faded color, maybe. There you go. Some really fun things to play around with. And of course, you can customize all of those actions by simply going out of button mode and just twirling down the edged photo. You can see in this case, oh, look at that. It's super tight. It even, make a, it even made a snapshot of uh, in, the, in the protocol. In the history panel, and then we set the swatches, convert the mode, and so on. Da -da 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 really, really fun. Cool. Any questions so far? I know I've been talking for a while now, so I want to pause for just a moment also to drink something. And uh, otherwise, I would like to show you a couple of more really fun things. Let's do something that's super easy, but often overlooked. Before I knew about this feature, I always did this manually, and I was wondering, how do people actually do this? It can't be that difficult, can it? I'm talking about panorama pictures. Duh. Um, so I have prepared, uh, I think this should be on panorama, there we go. This should be on my desktop. I have prepared some images which I took earlier this year. They are not very exciting, <laughs> but um, well, I guess they, they do the trick, right? So I made sure to uh, take some images and what's well, of course for Panorama is important, so Photoshop can stitch them automatically. I made sure to overlap uh, certain parts of the image. So for example, we can see this house here. There you go. And this also shows up, partly of course, not completely, in the other image. Quite important. Otherwise, Photoshop doesn't have any data to stitch those images together. And now, it's really as easy as import. Hang on. Photo merge. There we go. I always confuse those three. Was it import? Was it scripts? Or was it automate? In this case, it was automate. All right. <laughs> um, cool. We can browse either for the folder or for the files. Um, I could do the folder, but I'll just do the files for now. Because then if I happen to have more images in this folder, I don't have to use all the ones that maybe aren't part of the same panorama. Okay. So, uh, yep, that looks good to me. Open. If we happen to know more about this panorama, um, is this a spherical panorama? Is this cylindrical? I think this one is a cylindrical one. Um, much better farmer. Oh yeah, probably the hay bear, that's right. <laughs> Those are quite big marshmallows. Oh dear. <laughs> All right. Um, where was I? Yes, if I happen to know more about this panorama, Perhaps I do know that I only, uh, if I have like a special camera that uh, takes cylindrical photos, or if I do a spherical panorama, in this case, um, I know it should be just cylindrical, um, then I can specify a um, subtype, but I'm just gonna leave it on auto, because we can. Uh, we're gonna need a bigger fire to roast those, yes, I agree. Um, <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it on auto, let Photoshop do all the work. And before I hit, click OK, I'm just gonna check that all the files are in there. Yep, they are. And would I like to blend them together? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, would I like to remove a vignette? I don't think there should be one of them, uh, should be a vignette on them, but we can remove it just in case. If Photoshop detects a vignette, sure, let's get rid of it. Um, there shouldn't be too much uh, of distortion in there, but if there is Photoshop, hey, you know better than I do, um, just get rid of it. And of course, since panoramas rarely are pixel perfect, uh, since even I don't have a steady hand to actually pay, take perfect photos, uh, I can just say yes. If you encounter any uh, transparent areas, please, please, uh, fill those in with content. We could do this manually, but if Photoshop can do it for us, 
We want to automate things. So let's tick that box as well. All right. And with that, we are ready to click OK and lean back and let Photoshop do all the work. Because it will now load all the images in record time. Try to find the similarities. And within a couple of seconds, depending, of course, on your size, oh, it has selected a couple of things. Let's deselect. <clears throat> it has stitched it together into Panorama. And I think there was perhaps some geometric distortion because it did transform the images ever so slightly. If we now look at the end, first of all, let's have a look at the fantastic panorama. I mean, that's really nice. Thank you, Photoshop. That was much easier than trying to do it by hand. And if we look at the individual layers, because sometimes we might want to change a thing, uh, this often happens. For example, imagine you have a car that traveled from here to here while you were taking the photos. Maybe you want to um, adjust some masks, or maybe uh, you had some trees uh, as part of the uh, photo and the leaves were moving slightly and you want to reduce some ghosting. In that case, you may want to adjust the um, layers individually. And of course, thanks to Photoshop, we can. And we can even admire the amazing blending work that Photoshop has done. You can see it tried to make a jagged line to hopefully conform to some of the pre-existing edges in the image. So hopefully we don't notice the transition. And we can have a look at some of the photos. Oh, whatever was here, Photoshop has decided to go to the right. I mean, okay, fine. As long as it looks good. Good. I mean, yeah, I can't see a difference. There you go. And finally, bringing them all together. And of course, if we don't want those layers. No, I don't want to fill them. I want to get rid of them. There you go. Be gone. Bring back the original photo. And there we have our panorama. Is this feature, uh, sorry, is this stitching feature updated or is it more or less what it already was in the past few versions? Um, I don't think there were any updates recently. I don't think so. At least I can't remember seeing any in the change logs. So I would say yes, it is more or less the same as before. But since I didn't know about it before someone told me, I feel like maybe... Some of you out there haven't seen this feature yet and have been trying to uh, adjust the images manually all the time. By the way, this feature can also be used to align multiple images. Uh, if you have taken a couple of them, perhaps a group photo, and you have a whole bunch of versions and you want to align them um, together, so maybe you can blend between those different uh, group photos, then Photo Merge is also the tool for you because in this case you would say perhaps collage, you don't want to transform it or just want to reposition it, maybe. And in this case, you don't want to blend the images together, you just want Photoshop to align those um, photos. So then you can do some easy blending together of those photos. Um, oh yes, the latest update was the content-aware fill one. That sounds about right. Mm, maybe. Maybe. Um, Photoshop does a great job with panoramas. I have tested other programs, included the special program, how to, how it's included. Uh, that was included um, with the camera you buy, you bought. Um, yeah. I mean, so far, Photoshop hasn't disappointed us, so why should it today? Um, that was a weird sentence. Okay, I think that's all uh, about panoramas I wanted to talk to you about, so let's do some more automation. Just gonna close that, and I think for this, let's create a new blank document. The document should be blank, not the file new document, Photoshop. Come on. See, you say one good thing about Photoshop and then it just stabs you in the back. Oh, no. All right. No problemo. Just go back here. 
and try this one, maybe. No. Ah, Photoshop, what are you doing? All right, all right. I'm, I'm sure it's me, Photoshop, I'm sure it's me. Let's try this one more time. I'm just gonna quit and reopen. Yes. All right. <laughs> uh, demo effect. All right. I'm just gonna create a new uh, document for this and we shall use uh, A4. Sure. Or even better, how about this? We'll use just a regular old, good old web. There it is, web large. All right, that's better. Photoshop's very easy to use. Yeah, but sometimes it's a bit of a diva, <laughs> especially if you want to create a new file. Like, you know, you're not doing that today. Um, all right, I would like to talk about two things. One of them is layer comps, and the other thing is layer assets. Both of them will allow us to deal with different versions of files and exporting them, hopefully stress-free. All right, so let's pretend, let's pretend we are running a, um, a streaming uh, enterprise all about uh, Adobe apps, maybe, and we could call it BW Live, maybe. And we would like to create some thumbnails for this, um, yeah, for this streaming, for those streams. So maybe, just maybe, we have, I think, sync. I think I have the hosts file in there. Oh, sorry, wrong folder. Uh, I think the automation ones. Yes, there they are. I'm just looking for a photo of um, yours truly. There we go. Maybe we have someone, <laughs> we have this guy here, and he would like to do a Photoshop stream. Perhaps a crash course. Who knows? So I'm just going to quickly remove the background, thanks to the new contextual toolbar. Thank you, Photoshop. See how easy that was? Love it. Um, maybe we have some text in here. Yeah, sure, let's stick with Avenir, but not oblique. Let's just make it heavy and say um, crash course. Let's have that aligned to the left. Photoshop. Whoop. Or maybe we could move that up here. There you go. He lost a lot of weight, by the way. Did I? <laughs> uh, all right. Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay, so I would like to add some backgrounds maybe because white, I don't know about you, doesn't look that interesting. So let's use perhaps blue to dark blue or something like this. Gradient, of course, using the right one, please, Tim. Thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> it should be part of the artboard again. There you go. And maybe just an image in the background so it's not too boring. Of course, we could use some of the uh, textures, maybe. I think there should be some in there. Um, <laughs> oh, we could use any old image, doesn't it actually matter. <laughs> I'm j I just want to create a thumbnail. I should have probably prepared that one. That's okay, though. Um, don't, oh, maybe, maybe some Firefly. No, oh, that's, that's the videos. Oh, God, Tim. What are you doing? <gasps> no. Uh, 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 um. Let's use anything. Come on, uh, filters, whatever. We, we're just gonna use this image. Doesn't matter. Or maybe, maybe this one. Sure. Right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to demonstrate layer comps. It doesn't have to be complicated. There you go. And reduce. 
opacity. All right, and text in white. And I think that should be enough for our test thumbnail. We're really just, <laughs> we're really just, uh, just seeing what we can do. All right, so let's make myself bigger. There you go. All right. Of course, I not only want to create Photoshop thumbnails, maybe I also want to create uh, thumbnails for something else, perhaps um, Illustrator or After Effects. And for that, I would like to use um, different, um, different colors, perhaps, or I would like to use um, other other logos. Oh, we could add a logo. That's actually a good point. If I have the library ready, I'm not sure if I do. Mm, no, of course I don't have it. Uh, oh, maybe I do. No, those are just the colors. Okay, never mind. I could um, add perhaps a different logo if I wanted to. Okay, so let's create a layer comp. Just gonna drag that here so we can hopefully all see what is happening. The thumbnails contains the reaction of the chat too. Huh? Oh. Mm. <laughs> all right. Um, cool. So to create layer comps, we shall go to window layer comps. Who would have thought? In here, I can just undock this panel for now so it stays open. Close this go we can define different document states let's call it that um, so for example we could say um, I want a new one call that we could do with photo with text maybe or I don't want to text or oh, how about this I'm just gonna create a new one for Illustrator or After Effects maybe Something like this. So I'm going to create a new gradient layer. Using the correct gradient, please. There you go. It's sort of After Effects, isn't it? <laughs> Maybe a bit more purple. There you go. That's After Effects, all right. <laughs> and I can also tweak the opacity of this. And now we could have Photoshop and After Effects. Perhaps a bit more. And now I want to um, automatically switch between them based on whatever I uh, would like to use today. Maybe just to keep it interesting, let's add a third one and we will make this to actually see a difference. Bit of orange or burnt umber, I suppose, and sort of illustrator colored. Although this is more like a dirt colored one. <laughs> I'm not quite happy with this. That's not too bad. All right, so we have three colors in here ready that we can now use. I will group them and convert them to a smart object. And clicking into this smart object, actually we didn't have to group them, I suppose. We now have our three, and this one actually, yes, 60%, 60%. And let's also make it 63% because why not? In here, we can now toggle between those three layers. So let's finally create our layer comp. So I will do the first one and call this one Illustrator. And we would like to apply the visibility because I will now toggle the visibility based on the uh, existing ones. So I don't want to change the position or the appearance or any other layer comps in those smart objects, this is just fine. Illustrator. All right. Then, um, just going to refresh that real quick. I'm going to create a new one, and we should call that um, After Effects. Just call it AE. There you go. 
And finally, our Photoshop one. Photoshop. There you go. And by the way, it, the reason I had to refresh is I created the... Um, I, I made, I made ed edits to the layer comp after I have created it. The Photoshop, I have made the edits and then created the layer comp so I don't have to refresh. All right, so if I now switch between the three, we can see we can toggle automatically whichever layer is visible. So I'm going to save that. Hop on over back. And now we can see we only have one layer. However, in the Properties panel, we will see a drop-down, a new one, where we can select Illustrator, After Effects, or Photoshop. <laughs> there you go. And, of course, this um, could also apply to any other layers. We can change the position, maybe. We could change, like I said, the layer style. This is quite useful because, remember, Using layer styles, you can add uh, also color overlays, so you can recolor something quite easily without having to add multiple uh, uh, multiple versions of this layer if you don't want it. So you can easily pick a color if you want. Of course, then you have to make sure. I'm just going to go back that um, the effects uh, appearance is selected. Otherwise, it won't work. Okie doke. Um, the cool thing about this, like I said, is we can nest those uh, layer comps. So I could maybe duplicate that. Call this one Crash Course Illustrator. And one more time and this one would be After Effects. There you go. And same thing like before. Let's create a layer comp. Starting with After Effects. Of course, this time I have to make sure that the background does match After Effects. Create New. Let's call this one AE Thumb. Nail. Right, I want to change the visibility. Yes, position. No, appearance. No, layer comp. Yes. All right. Um, yeah, let's create another one quickly so we can see all three of them. Uh, so, PS, thumbnail, visibility. Yes. All right, in this case, I've created the... Um, the thing first, the layer comp, and now I want to modify it. So in this case, I will set this one to Photoshop. Show the Photoshop layer and refresh to make sure it is applied. Um, and lastly, to round it off, let's go to Illustrator. New AI thumbnail visibility layer comp. Yes. And there we go. We have now nested the individual uh, layer comps inside of a smart object. And of course, we could, if we wanted to, nest this one again and also save these here. And imagine how useful this can be not only for thumbnails, but of course, maybe business cards um, for client. Um, perhaps you're working on uh, badges where you want to have different versions of those ready um, or anything else really where you want to have different options available. The uh, most used example is probably the traffic light where you have a design and you want to switch between the three colors that's how you can do it. All right. Now, let's um, finally, because uh, we have... I have one more thing I would like to show you. And this is the Layer Assets uh, feature. I'm just going to close this. Oh, sorry. By the way, you can also export 
um, this this individual layer comms via the export menu. So you don't have to do it one by one. You can say export all layer comms, and there you go. Uh, Mockups, yes, definitely. I'm sure you could do maybe a couple of different ones, tall bottle, short bottle, or the cans we had earlier, tall can, shorter one, who knows. Right. Um, layer assets. That's right. Okay. Lost track there for a second. Uh, King Julian, what's happening again? Oh no, the chat is going wild. That's okay, Tim, just keep going, just keep going. <laughs> a cool thing in Photoshop, layer assets, which um, people uh, have done on stream before, but I have never seen the, um, the complete guide to these assets, because it's quite cool, is we can rename layers and use them to export individual assets of, uh, oh, 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 okay, King Julian, right, fine, I see, thank you. <laughs> we, it's never going to get anything done today. <laughs> we can export individual uh, layers in Photoshop straight from here, right? We don't need to um, go here and do, oops, sorry. We don't need to go to every layer and say quick export layer. We can export the contents, of course, if we want to. Here, there we go. That is quick export, but perhaps we want to automate that and that's why we're here. For this, um, we need to know how we can tell Photoshop how those and which layers should be exported. To do this, let's just use the King Julian image. Sure. Uh, we rename the layer and add a file extension to the end. For example, we could say uh, King Julian dot PNG JPEG JPEG. Right. Now, Photoshop knows that we, if we export it in a special way, which I will show you in just a moment, Photoshop will know that we want the JPEG file of this. There are some default quality options uh, in Photoshop. Um, you can change the quality and the um, you can change it in percentage or uh, as a number. And the default one for... Um, The default one for JPEG is 90%, right? Um, so if you don't specify the quality of that JPEG, it will be set to 90% by default. However, if we would like to change that, uh, we can add the quality at the end. For example, we could say 50% or 59%, I guess. 50%. Now it will only be exported at 50% quality. This is quite important, for example, if you are using, uh, if you're doing YouTube thumbnails, uh, YouTube doesn't accept anything above two megabytes as a thumbnail. So in this case, you might want to reduce the quality if it's too big. Now, don't get this confused with image size. If you put it after, of course, only for JPEGs, you can't reduce the quality for PNGs. That won't work. Those will be exported always at 32-bit um, bit depth. Um, so if you want to change the size instead of the um, quality, then the number has to go before the um, desired uh, image. Ideally, you also wouldn't use any spaces. So we could say 200% King Julian. And now the JPEG of King Julian would be exported at twice the, la the layer size. Or we could even, uh, if we want to be super precise, we can say we want it exactly at uh, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Or we could say we want it exactly at 6, 
inches by four or five inches. Or we could even mix and match. We can say 500 millimeters. I mean, it wouldn't make sense to do six inches by 500 millimeters, but we can. So we can mix and match the different uh, units. We can do pixels, we can do inches, we can do centimeters, and we can do millimeters. Um, okay. And if we are uh, specifying it in pixels, we actually don't need to write pixels. We can do 500 pixels, but we don't have to. If we just leave it 600 by 400, Photoshop will do pixels. Or we could even do something like 600 inches by 400, and this would be 600 inches by 400 pixels. Okay, 1080 by 1060. Uh, no, not with a star, with an asterisk. You have to use the X um, for that. Yeah, the compression rate for JPEGs is after the, um, after the file. So you can either say a percentage, 50%, or 59% again. I don't like the zero, apparently. Um, or you can just do a number from 1 to 10. So you can do 5, that would be 50%. Or you can do 10, that would be 100%, or quality of 10. Right, so far, so good. But we can do more. For PNGs, if we don't specify quality, in the bit depth in this case, um, it will always go with 32, but we can also say we only want 24. Or the other one, the last, actually other one supported is 8. So quality of 8, 24 or 32 is um, possible. Okay, for GIFs, or if you want to either pronounce it a different way, for GIFs, um, you can have uh, transparency. This will just use basic uh, a one color transparency, like all GIFs, so nothing uh, special. You can also uh, specify the size, however, quality is not supported, I don't think. All right, cool. Let's uh, make this a bit more complex, because for now we have only exported Oh, actually, we haven't exported anything. I've just shown you how to do it. We can export it in a, in a moment. Uh, for now, we only have uh, done one asset per layer. Of course, we could also perhaps export this one as a new layer. What the heck is that noise? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It shouldn't... It's, it's, it's very strange. It's very strange indeed. Okay, I might, it's my spaceship. Yeah, I might need to check something because I've also heard that. Okay, don't question it, Tim, don't question it. <laughs> All right. Um, complex, that's where we left off. We can add more than just one, um, more than just one layer. More, sorry, more than just one asset per layer. There we go. And we can do that by comma separating the different layer names. For example, we can also say King Julian.jpg. And finally, perhaps also a 50% version of uh, King Julian.jpg. So this would now export three different assets. One, the first one is a full size PNG. The second one is a full-size JPEG. We could also specify the quality if we wanted to. And the third one, finally, a 50% reduced in size JPEG version. Yeah, I think it's this, yeah, Sandrine, I think, yeah, you're right. It's something on Windows, but I'm not sure why it's sounding so weird. It shouldn't be. Um, never mind, though. So, um, oh, yes, and thank you for pasting that link. Uh, Sandrine, great, lovely. Yes, okay. A couple of things to keep in mind for, uh, you can also use the plus instead of the uh, comma. I think it looks better with plus. 
Uh, yes, mm, probably. <laughs> sure. Um, a cool thing that I like about um, these naming uh, schemes is also you can specify uh, subfolders by using the no there they are by using these square brackets you can say folder and then whatever you're going to call it um, King Julian, that one was King Julian. I think it also works without the brackets. We might need to try that in a moment. So, for example, if you have, um, if you have um, perhaps some low resolution versions and some high res versions, and you want to keep them in separate folders so you can export them to different platforms, perhaps subfolders are really, really useful for that. All right, so let's go. Back to the one with... Oh, I didn't even save it. Great. Thanks, Tim. King Julian dot JPEG. Let's see. Yeah. King Julian dot PNG. And finally, what did we use? I think 50%, right? JPEG. All right. They don't... Um, they, they can have different names. If you have more than one layer, of course, they can't share a layer name if they're in the same folder. So I couldn't rename this also, kingjulian.png. That wouldn't work. Cool. With that, I think we can finally, we can finally export our, um, our images. I w really wish there was something similar in Illustrator. Oh, yeah. Maybe there's a, there's a plugin. Maybe. I don't know. Um, okay. So, let's export. Before we can export, however, we need to make sure that in the uh, settings, we have the generator enabled. And I think that was here. There we go. Enable generator. Otherwise, won't work. Um, so, now I need to remember what it was, probably under Generate, Image Assets, and hopefully this should now generate my image assets. Question is, where? <laughs> I didn't specify that. Let's save the document. Save as. Let's put that, sure, in the same folder. Thumbnail. Save. Uh, oh, there you go. I should be able to export them. <laughs> Layers to files. There we go. Like I said, the German uh, Photoshop sometimes quite different, but that was. All right. Um, browsing. Oh, let's save it here. Sure, let's make a new folder. Assets. Create. Open. File name prefix. Yep. Thumbnail is fine. Visible layer only. It's file type PSD. Doesn't really matter. And blah, 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 blah. And run. Successful. All right. So hopefully, if we did everything correctly, we should have a panorama. Thumbnail assets. Nope. This one. Assets. King Julian. Where is my King Julian? Oh, I wasn't the right folder after all. <laughs> Never mind. And we have an error. Apparently I mistyped something. That might have been the case. Oh, I, oh yeah, I think. Yep, I know what happened. I did make the exact mistake I tried to warn you about. I tried. That's actually a good thing that we can see. I've tried to save one version as the JPEG with this name, and then I've tried to save another version with the same name. So we can just call this one half, and then it will work. <laughs> oh dear. 
trying to warn people of not doing something and then doing the exact thing. Brilliant. Okay, just gonna delete that for now and we'll try again. Export layers to files and run. Do, 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 do. Oh, I didn't save it in the subfolder. Great, Tim. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, all right. I'm missing the subfolder. Where is the King Julian one? Photoshop, what are you doing? Probably saved it somewhere here, hasn't it? I really should specify the subfolder. Oh, Photoshop, come on, what are you doing? Work with me here. There's the files. Let's let's create a subfolder. And go. Is it possible to create an action that will do all this? Um, well, you certainly can create. Uh, you can rename layers using actions. That definitely works, so you could, um, in your action, specify that. Mm, I haven't tried exporting that, but, it, but that wouldn't be the hard part anyway, so. <sighs> what did we do wrong again? I'm sure talking while doing the thing is very beneficial. I'm sure I probably have selected the wrong f uh, layer files. Let's do this one last time, and if it doesn't work, then I did something wrong in Photoshop again. It's me. It's not you. Probably should have. But that looks correct to me. What did I do wrong, Photoshop? Did I, is the naming correct? Things you want to demo, and then it doesn't work. That's always really fun. No, that seems correct to me. Very strange. Have I accident accidentally deselected the generate version? No, it's still in there. So why are we not seeing anything? Save it. Oh, I think my Photoshop is not liking me today. Something is definitely off. That's not supposed to happen. Oh dear. Let's reset that workspace. Something is definitely happening. Someone is messing with me. <laughs> Layers to files. No, that should be. Let's try it one last time. And if it doesn't work, then we, should, we will just call it. <laughs> And I'm gonna check it offline because something is definitely uh, something is definitely off. Okay, so let's try that one more time. But where's that folder now? What? Uh, I mean, they're there now. Did they just take, okay, maybe it was Mac OS just taking a while? Well, I'm, I'm confused now. I, I'm, I'm actually confused because this was, huh? I think there might be ghosts in the studio. <laughs> okay. Apparently, it was just Mac OS failing to show the files because they are here now. <laughs> We're faster than Mac OS. Amazing. macOS, it just works. Un until you want to refresh a file or a folder, which you can't, because macOS should do it automatically. And it works great until, like you saw, it doesn't. So we didn't do anything wrong. It was, everything was right. <laughs> we did everything correctly. We exported the layers. Photoshop did everything right. It's just, it's just macOS was playing tricks on us. 
Okay. Well, that's good news. All right. So after all, the thumbnail assets folder just took a while to show up. There it is. There's our half-sized image. There's our full-sized JPEG. And finally, our PNG. Whew, that was a, a lot of work. So let's recap because I feel like we deserve that. Um, to save different assets of a layer, rename those uh, layers using the syntax, which apparently Sandrine just posted a link to in the chat. There you go. You can separate them by comma. You can add a size and quality. And of course, change the file uh, folder if you like. Perhaps, perhaps you want them in a subfolder. Um, then making sure the generate image assets is ticked. You can export it using layers to files. And in there, you can specify the folder, uh, the prefix if you want, generate that. I'm not going to do it again because we already did. And Photoshop will then, using the correct folder, and after refreshing it, thanks macOS, um, we'll put that right here. And you have all your generated files in one folder. Ooh. We also looked at um, layer comps today, which we have here, where we were able to switch between, oops, sorry, switch between multiple versions of a Photoshop document, like that. And even if we want to export them easily, happens in Windows too. Yes, Sandrine, but in Windows, there's a refresh option. You can do a five in the Explorer window and you can refresh it. In macOS, you can't. It doesn't work. There's no such feature. Something that has been bothering for a while now. Um, all right. And with that, I think that's everything I wanted to talk to you about. Let's see, Project Aspen, Layer Assets, Layer Comps, Panoramas, and just Save Export Actions. Yes, that is it. Um, although, perhaps as one last thing, and then I should really end the stream. Uh, just boom macOS, I know. Uh, one cool thing, which I always wondered what it is, and I never tried it. So a couple of days earlier, I finally tried it. I've tried the mysterious contact sheet two because I had no idea what that was. I opened it. In here, you can specify a folder. In this case, I think it would make sense for us to go to the, I think it was an automation. Yes, hosts. And include all subfolders. Yep, sure. Uh, document size. Yes, I want one big document, please. And this, yes, I want to place them across first. Auto spacing, that's all good. And the reason I'm speeding through this is just so you can actually see what's happening and then it all makes much more sense in just a moment because Photoshop will now automatically create if you are perhaps a bit older, if you remember the old analog photo um, days, I mean it's still there but you know, um, the vendors would, they would send you a contact sheet where you can say like oh yes Oh, look, there are batches from yesterday. I, I want exactly this image and that one and that one and that one and that one and that one. And even creates a new file if it's apparently too many photos. Um, so this can be quite useful if you want just want to have a quick preview of all the different uh, files you have in this case, of all the different hosts we have on Adobe Live. Um, so quite cool. Hmm? Okay, um, quite cool where we can you now export this into the client and they can pick the photos they want without us having to arrange them manually. And there we go. Um, let's see. There was a debate when they removed around CS2 or thereabout. For once, people have spoken and put it back in CS4 to equipment versions. Interesting. 
Yeah, CS2 was before my time. I started with CS4. So, or CS3 actually, but yeah, CS4 around that time. You could do that in Bridge too. Yes, fantastic. Tim, didn't you want to do another stream with the key map? You said that in the German stream. Um, that was a while ago. To be fair, I mean, uh, I hope it's not too much information. I have been out sick for a while now. So, uh, yeah, I didn't, uh, couldn't do the, uh, <laughs> the crash courses, which I had planned previously. Uh, but yes, if, I, yeah, I vaguely remember something like that. I might just need to rewatch my own stream to see what exactly I was promising. <laughs> uh, key mapping, yes, I, th I, I vaguely do remember something like that. I mean, I, mean, I might need to recheck that one. But uh, if I said anything like that, then yes, I'm sure it's coming soon. <laughs> um, all right, cool. I think we're now finally done for realsies. Um So as always, thank you very much for joining us, for joining me today, whether it was in the live chat or maybe watching you're watching the replay today. This was really, really fun. I hope you also watched yesterday's session all about actions and variables. We had quite a lot of fun, or at least I did. Uh, and Photoshop was also mostly playing along, uh, just like today. So thank you, as always, for joining. I uh, hope to catch you uh, the next time again on Adobe Live. That's all for this week, apart from, of course, our colleagues, our friends from the US uh, will be live later today. And if you have any questions, drop them into the comments, either on YouTube or on Discord. But for now, that's all the time we have. Thank you very much and see you soon again on Adobe Live. Bye for now. <laughs>